Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Apologies for it being quite a while, but it's been a busy old few weeks. Um, birthdays and life gets in the way. But anyway, we're back on track now. So what has arrived in the uh, last month or two since I did a video? Well, the haymaking's done. Possibly, I might do one more session with the haymaking, but uh, God, hopefully not. So, what's happened in the meantime? Well, in the meantime, I finished repairing the pet, and that seems to work fine. My next project is to get it online. I'm having a few few problems with that, but I shall come back to it at a later date. Um, but one thing that has arrived in the meantime, and I did post a picture of this on Facebook a little while ago, but this is, uh, it's a brand new purchase from uh, eBay, it cost a princely sum of about, I don't know, 50 pounds or something. And that might give you a little clue of what it is. Perhaps it won't. So let's delve a little further. So there are two printer circuit boards. That is the first one, obviously. Let's open up this rather fetching pink packaging. I don't know why I've suddenly got into the um, fascination of building motherboards, but um, I do quite enjoy it, although it is particularly expensive, massively time consuming, and um, but greatly rewarding. Oh, it's very well wrapped. So what do we have? I'll keep it on the pink, I think. Do you know what it is yet? As Rolf Harris once said. Uh, there we go. So it is an Apple One computer, or a replica anyway. Motherboard, and this little board here, little circuit board, is the cassette I.O. Now the Apple One is obviously the precursor to the Apple II computer released by the Wozniaks via Apple Computer in, I think the Apple II was 77, so this must have been where is it? There it is, 1976. Now this is the board for the design that um, Steve was, uh, the was, yeah, Wozniak, took to the Homebrew Computer Club and um, was give away, giving away the schematics free of charge to anyone who was interested. Steve Jobs um, cottoned onto this quite quickly and figured out they could probably make some cash by selling ready-to-go computers. And they started a little company called Apple sometime later. You might not have heard of it, but um, they seem to be doing quite well. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we have an Apple II, which uses the MOS 6502, the Commodore chip, um, as well as lots of log logic in here. There'll be loads of LS chips kicking about in there. And we have a little cassette I.O. board. Now, the Apple II is um, its a strange machine and unique. It's very much of its time, of its era. If you go back to 1975, 76, 77, um, the computers of that era were difficult to use, to say the least. And this is no exception to that. It, it does come with a basic once it's built. It is usable, you can type, there is a keyboard, and it does plug into a, I think it's a composite monitor. So it is usable as a, a relatively modern day computer, but it's, um, there's a very big fly flying about. Um, but it's not as simple or as easy to use as an Apple II or a Commodore 64 or a PET or any of those machines. It's rather more complex. Now, apart from the myriad of little chips that need populating amongst this green city that you see before you. Um, you have to build a power pack as well because it used a, a strange AC supply, which is not usual for the time. The pet's the same, so is the Commodore 64. Um, so you, you use um, a couple of transformers to give yourself the two AC voltages. Uh, it uses an old Apple II keyboard 
for the I.O., for the uh, user I.O. rather. It does have a standard video connector. I think it's composite, but I shall have to look into that. Um, what does it need? It'll need, it looks like the silver PCB at the back there, the big grounding, will be for a voltage diode, I guess, a uh, voltage regulator, rather. I suspect um, it's very much like a, a Commodore PET. Um, is is sort of the power pack sort of on the motherboard as well anyway um so what does it need it'll need a 6502 a mostec 6502 i think it uses some motorola chips um there'll be a whole bag of capacitors and resistors and there'll be a edge connector somewhere for this uh what does that plug into then so the cassette PCB obviously fits into a socket that will go on the side there. I don't have the socket now, obviously, as I haven't done any soldering yet. So I'll have to purchase what I guess is an 8-bit ISA-style socket for the uh, for the Apple One. Um, now, I'm sure you all know what the Apple One is. It's the precursor to the Apple II, as I said earlier. I uh, sold in... I think it was mid-1976 for $666, so 66 cents. Something about was like in repeating numbers, as uh, as mathematicians do. Um, now, there wasn't a lot of Apple Ones made. There were a few hundred. They were all handmade in uh, the garage, I believe, st at Steve Jobs' mum's house. So um, I would imagine it was a massively labor-intensive job to get these things done so I guess that's why not so many were made um, my plan is obviously to get this thing up and running um, I believe the Apple one works in a peculiar manner in so much as the, the, the motherboard itself works in two separate halves one half will be a terminal as it works as a, a display terminal as was popular in the 1970s and the other half works as the uh, memory and keyboard I.O. and all the rest of it. So you can actually power up half of the motherboard to see if it works and it will give you a display even if the other half isn't working or isn't perhaps populated. I'm not sure. Now the Apple One um, has was its own basic, I think I'm correct in saying, which isn't like the basic that UI and everybody else knows. So that's going to take some getting used to. I'll probably play a little video if I can find one of someone using an Apple One so you can see exactly what's going on. Obviously, I don't have any ex experience with that as I've never used one. Not yet, anyway. So there we go. So this is the Apple One project I'm going to be doing possibly over the winter this year. Um, and we'll see how we get along. I still have more projects to do, but... Um, this is the one that's got my attention at the moment. I will be coming back to doing some more speech work on various computers as I am fascinated by speech. And I'll be coming back to the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum. But that's, uh, again, a project for another day. So I'm going to leave it now. Um, I'll probably find a video, attach this to the end, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care and goodbye for now.